Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. I always say I'm not a numbers person. I'm really not. Like just, you know, checking and, you know, finances and all that just it doesn't interest me until we start talking about numerology and how certain numbers, the numbers that are revealed in your date of birth, all of that is amazing how it charts your future and really what's going on in your life. We're going to learn about your universal year number for 2024. Let's look ahead. And she's an Egyptian numerologist and she's back with us. Sarah Bachmeyer is with us. Hi. Hi, Hi Steve. I'm doing great. It's good to see you. You too. You too. And so, not just hear you. Exactly. So when we talked last, we were talking about not the universal year number, but what, what number was that? The personal year number. Ah. Um, and so, yeah, I talked about, so at the change of the year, mainly in January, we're going to all experience a personal year um, vibrational shift and then a collective vibrational shift, which everybody's going to experience. And that's called your universal year number. How is this? Okay. So before we get to how is this determined? <laughs> What is the number and what does it universally universally mean for all of us in 2024? I, um, well, we 2023, well, let, let me tell you how you calculate it. Sure. Um, you add the numbers of the year. So 2023, if you add the two plus two plus three, we um, came up with the number seven. So 2023, collectively, everybody experiences this, this energy. Um, and it, uh, you know, how, how it affects us collectively, that's a very interesting question. And I think each individual, depending on where their consciousness is, is going to experience it a little differently, depending on what level they're on. But if you wanted to track track um, social events and environmental events, uh, that would be actually a great study on mm. what happens energetically um, for a number seven year. But collectively, it would have been about self-reflection, um, contemplation, uh, spiritual awareness if you're in that area mm -hmm. it would have been it wouldn't have been a year 2023 wasn't necessarily a year for everybody to to um buy sell be man manifest things it was more of a contemplative year which we need because we're coming into a number eight 2024 is a universal number eight year and that's going to be about going from inertia to action. And it's a great year for buying and selling, relationships, starting a business. Last year really wasn't the energy for that. But 2024 will be a dynamic time to get busy with what came up for you in, in 2023. So I'm not reading into this and, and wanting to say, yeah, all right, just because we're here talking now. But I am going to say, me personally, with what you described for 2023, would describe me and my my approach to the year, the way the year went. You talk about spiritual. I think I became much more spiritual in 2023. Um, a lot of that aligns. And, you know, even business-wise, I have some ideas floating out there. And I'm only just starting to put them in motion. And I've been thinking about them for years. And I literally just started on one idea. Uh, now we're almost into 2024. So it's reasonable to think that by the time it kind of takes off, which I know it will, uh, got to be positive, manifesting. Uh, I, I, It sounds like that would be in line with, with you know, my, uh, I guess, say timeline. And I'm not, yeah, again, I'm not reading into this, but that all, I'm, I'm I'm vibing with it. It's where I'm going with that. It sounds right. And 
and you could only really feel that if you were aligned with this type of energy. Uh, the 2023 um, wasn't, yeah, wasn't necessarily a year for manifesting. It was, it was a year for contemplation, self-reflection, and allowing those great ideas to surface. And maybe some, um, maybe some time on how to put things together, but it wouldn't have been a forceful year. And you're probably starting to feel 2024, the number eight is about manifestation, manifesting what came up for you in 2023. So the ideas that you had to put into action would be, this would be the year to do that. Yeah. It's going to be a very productive year for, for people. And I even feel what you're saying, the self-reflection myself personally been doing that a lot this year. And, uh, you know, I could have told you before you told me what you said, you know, that 20, 2023 would be a year that many of us, uh, reflect more, but I have, so <laughs> it seems it kind of falls in line. Uh, the, what was the number for 2024? That was a, it's a universal number eight year okay and and see so all of this kind of if you're energetically aligned you would feel the your life path also and that determines what kind of year it's going to be for you too so i talked about the personal year numbers for everybody and keeping in mind that 2024 is going to be a number eight year then and I know that you're going to have a personal year number one, and that's going to be about attainment, aligning with desire and creating. And you can all do this within 2024. If you're a life path number two, it's going to be about integrating your masculine and feminine giving and receiving finding balance in your life um, at a higher level than than you have ever done before if you have a, a life path number three that's going to be about implementing wise communication learning how to communicate by learning how to communicate better and really listening to your words and not just well it would be about not gossiping <laughs> somebody once told me that you know gossiping was not such a high energetic adventure and i will i loved gossiping i was like whoa i don't know if i can cut that out altogether but it's possible yeah you know i'm, so just, I'm right there with you when i worked in a different atmosphere there was a lot of gossip and yeah, of course I was probably part of that. I find now it's boring. Like, it's just like, ugh, let's go away. I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> it doesn't serve. Why, why even waste, literally waste the energy on gossip, you know? Just right. Finding do. the balance between listening and speaking that. And for you, I, I would imagine that's probably something you're a master at the, <laughs> being the occupation that you have? I, I try. Um, I try to be verbal in, in communicating, um, but I will say when others around me, close to me, don't communicate, just to tell your feelings. What are you thinking? And there's miscommunication. I get a little frustrated. Not like angry, but it's like, really? Come on. Um, just talk. Tell how you feel. When you work with somebody, Sarah, you need very little information to really chart their future or at least tell them how their future is going to go, right? Um, that's correct. I can tell a lot by their birth date. Um, and that includes the day, the month, and the year. But people, but everybody's different. So it 
it does matter if they tell me what's going on and communicate with me a little bit about what's going on so I can kind of get an idea of their level of consciousness because I don't want to be talking way over their head mm. and I don't want to waste their time on information that they wouldn't understand. Right. So yeah, communication's big for me, although I'm more of a recluse than I am. I, I really admire your gift of communication. I think that it's an art. Well, there be yeah, truth be told. Um, I was periods of insecurity and uh, been through all of that. You know, it wasn't like I, you know, came out of the womb talking. <laughs> you know, it, it was, you know, it took time to get, uh, and even still, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm at the point now where I, I can do anything. And I, if you ask me, you know, would I feel the way, same way five years ago? I probably would say no. You know, I turned down a lot of things where I should have jumped into it, but now I'm at the point where it's yes i bring it on i I want it i want to it's it, it's fun it's enjoyable you know in terms of communication what we do in terms of broadcast and uh and all of that uh i'm fascinated by numerology in that in my mind and i know there's a there is this stark difference it almost reminds me of astrology in that i view astrology as it's not fortune telling it's telling you the timeline of your life, what's going to happen. And it sounds the same way with numerology, where we look at- I get a you lot know, of people- Right? That, yeah, I get a lot of people that said they had their natal chart done and they were told a lot of the similar information that astrology and numerology that they were very connected- I just had that happen uh, yesterday. And with this one client, um, they looked at her chart, her natal chart and said that she would be a teacher. And she was so far from being a teacher. She was a musician. She was so many, so many other things. And she didn't have a desire to be a teacher. But when I read her, her chart with Egyptian numerology, she understood a little deeper about where that teaching was going to come from. And we went through the preliminary purposes that she's had and, and kind of connect the dots with what her passion really is and where she wants to go ultimately go with all that. And so she was able to connect and see why the astrologist said that she'd be a teacher. She was also going to, you know, be a leader and, be innovative in all the things that a teacher would be, but it just was explained in a different way to her. So after we got done with the reading, she was able to see why the astrologist said that she would be a teacher. And then she got really excited about it. So mm -hmm. in some ways, I think astrology can help numerology, just like numerology can help astrology clarify the energy that we were born with. I I totally it agree with you. Two different, totally agree with you. You two different modalities, but they come to the same, a lot of times they come to the same conclusion. I, I had my astrological chart done by somebody that I really trust. And a lot of it didn't apply to me because hmm. for my future, because it was stuff that I've already dealt with. You know what I mean? It's like they weren't really telling me any new information. They were, it was more like they were telling me what I've already experienced, what I've worked through, and to get to where I am now. Well, it validated, but, it validated that it's yes. accurate because you could say, it is yeah, accurate. yeah. And I've, I had a, not to digress, but just to, you know, illustrate your point, a chart done a year and a half, almost two years ago. And the astrologer said, yeah, you're going to see more abundance coming your way without a doubt, you know, and, and she gave me a date month and she was right. It, it, it perfectly right. 
And she even said on the chart, and when I look at those charts, the natal charts, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. There's like quadrants and symbols and all that going on. I get very bored. I just can't. It's like, I, I ask you people like you, what does it mean? What, tell me what I need to know, you know, get to it. Um, but she even said, see that, that quadrant right there, there's three symbols. Yeah. She goes, those are your three kids. I didn't tell her I had three kids. And then she even went deeper and said, you know, the one in the center, uh, that's your center, um, child in the middle. And then she said he's destined for a career of serving people, possibly law enforcement. And he's 17. And back then he was, you know, 15. Uh, and that's what he wants to do. So how does she do that? I don't know, but there is validity in all of this. And same thing with what you're saying, I'm seeing, you know, within the numbers. Um, and for me, I, I shared last time, 11 comes up all the time for me. I don't know why. I, I think I thought it's my life path number 11. I think it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And 11 keeps showing yeah. up. All, you know, my, I moved <laughs> my address is connected. If you add the numbers together, comes out to 11. You know, why? There's, I think there's a reason there. I'm being told something. I don't know what it is yet. Haven't figured that out. When somebody asks you the difference between astrology and, I'm sorry, numerology and Egyptian, what is the difference? Are they very similar? That's a really good question. I actually did a video on traditional numerology versus Egyptian numerology. And it, you know, for a lay person, it may not seem to be different in many ways, but for Egyptian numerology, it is in a sense where we, we have similar terms. The terminology is the same with traditional and Egyptian but the categories aren't, it's very complicated. What they call a soul urge number is actually the vowels of your birth certificate name and Egyptian numerology uses the soul urge name of a soul urge as your day of birth. So that's where it can get confusing. But Egyptian numerology uses the ancient Egyptian astrological chart it is based both with astrology and numerology. So that's why that's why I love it so much because it combines both divining tools together. You won't necessarily like in, in traditional numerology, your karmic lesson and your soul life purpose is the same number as your life path number. And in, in Egyptian numerology, we're going to get three different numbers three different energies, three different vibrations and directions because of the astrological chart. But our name and then the definitions are a little different, not too much. But Egyptian numerology doesn't use um, the negative aspects of a number. In Egyptian numerology, we don't believe that there is such thing as a good and bad frequency. There's only possibilities that you can, depending on where your energy is on a consciousness level, hmm. that's what, what it's based on. It's based on um, more of the highest potential that a person can reach with that vibration. We did at one time, I believe that where we were on a consciousness level, we did need for direction. We did need the duality of a number. It really helped us, but people are advancing so quickly spiritually that duality, that type of duality, the good and bad aspects of a number really don't serve people because a lot of people have already evolved out of good and bad, uh, right or wrong, black and white. They see things um, in a unity consciousness rather than two separate entities. Do you know what I mean? I think I'm getting it. Um, I really, <laughs> this is where it gets deep for me. Uh, and, and that's why I think so many people just say, 
let me know universal year number. Let me know what my life path number is. What can I anticipate? What can I expect? What, what bit you, what was that moment, that pinnacle moment where you said, yeah, this stuff is, this is really good. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to study Egyptian numerology. What, what bit you? It was the accuracy. Well, it was the fact that there were, it was so online and so aligned with who I am spiritually that it gave me answers. I think because I had such a difficult path, I had a lot of trauma growing up and if you've had a lot of tra trauma growing up and in order to be successful, you really need to clear that, understand why it happened. And Egyptian numerology explained that to me. It explained why I had such a difficult wow. path. And not only why, but what I was supposed to do with it. <laughs> and I never got that from any other reading. From in from astrology, numerology, tarot, psychic readings, I never got it clarified for me on why I chose such a difficult path and uh, what I'm supposed to do with it. Wow! So it got me out of it got me out of victim consciousness into empowerment by understanding my path. And, and like you, I have the master number eleven path. And so when I started doing readings with people who had master numbers, the number nine and the number six, I have a little clarification on why people from past lives, why people were born with certain life path numbers. And so that's when I wrote my second book, The Path of a Wounded Healer, because it not, I mean, astrology would tell me, yes, you had a difficult childhood. And numerology would point that out too, but it wouldn't tell me why. It wouldn't take that extra step to explain to me that there was a reason why everything unfolded the way that it did. And, and that was my um, aha moment with Egyptian numerology because I understood who I am and what I'm supposed to do with, with, every, with my life. And that was pretty powerful. Thanks for sharing that. Because I, 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 I have more clarity now and do yeah, I do. Whereby I look at astrology being, and again, I'm just starting to learn about numerology thanks to you, but I looked at astrology being here in terms of providing you with that insight and information and maybe new numerology here, not giving you, not being as robust, not having all the answers, but you're bringing it more like this, where there is more with numerology. You know, it's it, it runs way deeper than I uh, ever imagined, based on what you just said. Well, because well, you have a life path master number eleven, so it would anybody with a master number, it would point to and suggest that you had a difficult childhood. I mean, we, many of us did, um, but yeah, I'm going to say it was. And in it, in the difference, I think I, I tried to explain this before the difference between being, a, and we call that a wounded healer is that everybody has challenging times in their life, but a master number actually consents to go through these specific challenges in order to overcome them and then help others. So there's this beautiful tapestry. I didn't give consent. I didn't give consent. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> when I was a kid, nobody asked me, <laughs> you know, whatever happened. Uh, and again, not, not a horrible <laughs> childhood, but, you know, divorcing parents, very young, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I guess your soul gave consent, you know, some believe in a soul contract, um, uh, for the setup, which is to follow in your life, you know, and, and I do believe, and I know it's so cliche, but things happen for a reason. There's, there's, 
things are there. We don't know why these pieces were there. Some of us do. Some of us have put the pieces together. Some, there's a few like, why did that happen? But I got the rest of them here. Um, you know, it, it's it's kind of a puzzle and mystery. But thanks to things like Egyptian numerology, that can maybe give some insight, help you figure it out a little bit, like uh, it it apparently did for you. Yeah, yeah. I was able to help other people, which helped me to write my book. I, it was like I did a personal study of all the people that I worked with, what their life path numbers are, what they're doing now, and really saw how the pieces fit together and was able to help them see why things happen the way they did and what direction mm -hmm. to go in because of it. Got to tell you, I learned a lot today. Really did. <laughs> Good. Yeah, got a little deep for a moment there, but um, just what <laughs> you shared about yourself makes me want to learn more about Egyptian numerology because I am trying to put the pieces together. I'm just curious, like anybody else. I'm wondering, you know, why we're here, you know, and the universal year number. Even before, even when we first started, what you told me about 2023's number and what's coming for 2024, again, I'm not validating it because we're here together. That's what I'm feeling. And I see that exactly what you said was my 2023 and the 2024, that seems to be on target with what I'm working on. So um, final question, how does the year go? Is it, you know, September to September? Is it just a full calendar year? Um, how does uh, it that's a really good question. People that are not involved in numerology would say that in January, that's when the year starts. Egyptian numerology follows the month, the months, and it really did, it starts August 8th is when the energy for the new year starts rising. It starts to gain more momentum around the equinox, the fall, spring equinox in September. And it just, the momentum keeps, keeps moving along and we'll even see the spike on November 11th, 11, 11. Mm. And Which so is... I feel, I feel, I feel energetically that the following year starts to descend and the upcoming year starts to ascend the energy um, of the year. I can feel it and it can feel it in the seasons too. It, it's kind of like Native American. You can, uh, Native American Indians are really in tune with nature. Mm -hmm. And so the more that you get in alignment with numbers and see how it all fits in, even with, with nature, um, it's just a exciting, wonderful, interesting avenue. But we've wow. already begun 2024. Like you said, you know, the engines are starting to rub up. Yes, without a doubt. And I didn't even know that. And I shared before I was starting some new ideas um, and just deployed them last week and the week before on this idea I've had bubbling under for a couple of years. So really it's 2024 in, in terms of what we're talking about. And that's right on target, you know, with, with the projection. Um, cool stuff. How do we, uh, how do we connect with you, Sarah? What's your website? Um, www.egyptiannumerology.org. And you're available for consults, readings, charts, all of that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, That's what I do. So cool getting together with you. Learned a lot today. And uh, thank you for your your transparency uh, to illustrate that because this runs way deeper than I ever thought. And uh, I think that's fantastic. So for that, I thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action.
Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.